the ancient Greek philosopher Plato was right. Earth is made on average of cubes, according to what new research has found. This is according to the University of Pennsylvania. They say the ancient Greek philosopher was onto something. Plato posited the shapes of the building blocks of the universe. According to him, the earth was formed of cubes. Researchers now find a fundamental truth in that premise. Studying the shapes and fragmentation patterns of a variety of rocks, they found that the average of all their forms is a cube. I mean, that's strange, but that's what they found. Science has steadily moved beyond Plato's conjectures, looking instead to the atom as a building block of the universe. Yet Plato seems to have been onto something researchers have found. In a new paper in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences, a team from the University of Pennsylvania, Budapest University of Technology and Economics, and University of Debrecen uses math, geology, and physics to demonstrate that the average shape of rocks on Earth is a cube. Quote, Plato is widely recognized as the first person to develop the concept of an atom, the idea that matter is composed of some invisible component at the smallest scale, end quote, says Douglas Gerald Mack, a geophysicist in Penn School of Arts and Sciences, Department of Earth Environmental Science, and the School of Engineering and Applied Sciences, Department of Mechanical Engineering and Applied Sciences. He says, but that understanding was only conceptual. Nothing about our modern understanding of atoms derives from what Plato told us. He goes on to explain, the interesting thing here is that what we find with rock or earth is that there is more than a conceptual lineage back to Plato. It turns out that Plato's conception about the element Earth being made up of cubes is literally the statistical average model for real Earth, and that is just mind-blowing, he says. The group's finding began with geometric model developed by mathematician Gabor Domokos of the Budapest University of Technology and Economics, whose work predicted that natural rocks would fragment into cubic shapes. This paper is a result of three years of serious thinking and work but it comes back to one core idea, says Domokos. If you take a three-dimensional polyhedron shape, slice it randomly into two fragments, and then slice these fragments again and again, you get a vast number of different polyhedral shapes. But in an average sense, the resulting shape of the fragments is a cube. Domokos pulled two Hungarian theoretical physicists into the loop, Ferenek, Kuhn, an expert on fragmentation, and Janos Torok, an expert on statistical and computational models. And after discussing the potential of the discovery, Gerald Mack says the Hungarian researchers took their findings to Gerald Mack to work together on the geophysical questions. In other words, how does nature let this happen? When we took this to Doug, he said, this is either a mistake or this is big, Domokos recalls. He says, we worked backwards to understand the physics that results in these shapes. Fundamentally, the question then they answered is what shapes are created when rocks break into pieces? Remarkably, they found that the core mathematical conjecture unites geological processes not only on Earth, but around the solar system as well. Gerald Mack says fragmentation is this ubiquitous process that is grinding down planetary materials. The solar system is littered with ice and rocks that are ceaselessly smashing apart. This work gives us a signature of that process that we've never seen before. Part of this understanding is that the components that break out of a formerly solid object must fit together without any gaps, like a dropped dish on the verge of breaking. As it turns out, the only one of the so-called platonic forms, polyhedra with sides of equal length, that fit together without gaps are cubes. One thing we speculated in our group is that, quite possibly, Plato looked at a rock outcrop and after processing or analyzing the image subconsciously in his mind, he conjectured that the average shape is something like a cube, Gerald Mack says. Plato was very sensitive to geometry, Domokos adds, and according to Lore, the phrase, let no one ignorant of geometry enter, 
was engraved at the door to Plato's Academy. In other words, you must be very knowledgeable of geometry to be able to enter into his school. Now, his institutes, his intuitions, backed by his broad thinking about science, may have led him to this idea about cubes, says Tomakos, to test whether their mathematical models held true in nature. The team measured a wide variety of rocks, hundreds that they collected, and thousands more from previously collected data sets, no matter whether the rocks had naturally weathered from a large outcrop or been dynamited up by humans, the team found a good fit to the cubic average. However, special rock formations exist that appear to break the cubic rule. The Giant's Causeway in Northern Ireland, with its soaring vertical columns is one example, formed by the unusual process of cooling basalt, these formations, though rare, are still encompassed by the team's mathematical conception of fragmentation. They're just explained by out-of-the-ordinary processes at work. Gerald, Ma Gerald Mack says, the world is a messy place. Nine times out of ten, if a rock gets pulled apart or squeezed or sheared, and usually these forces are happening together, you end up with fragments which are, on average, cubic shapes. It's only if you have a very special stress condition that you get something else. The Earth just doesn't do this often. The researchers also explored fragmentation in two dimensions or on thin surfaces that function as two-dimensional shapes with a depth that is significantly smaller than the width and the length. And there are fracture patterns are different, though the central concept of splitting polygons and arriving at predictable average shapes still holds. Jerlamek says, it turns out in two dimensions you're about equally likely to get either a rectangle or a hexagon in nature. They're not true hexagons, but they're the statistical equivalent in geometric sense. You can think of it like paint cracking. A force is acting to pull the paint apart equally from different sides, creating a hexagonal shape when it cracks. In nature, examples of these two-dimensional fracture patterns can be found in ice sheets drying mud, or even the Earth's crust, the depth of which is far outstripped by its lateral extent, allowing it to function as a de facto two-dimensional material. It was previously known that the Earth's crust fractured in this way, but the group's observations support the idea that the fragmentation pattern results from plate tectonics. Identifying these patterns in rock may help in predicting phenomena such as rock fall hazards or the likelihood and location of fluid, uh, fluid flows such as oil or water in rocks. For the researchers, finding what happens to be a fundamental rule of nature emerging from millennia-old insights has been an intense but satisfying experience. Domako says, there are a lot of sand grains, pebbles, and asteroids out there, and all of them evolve by chipping in a universal manner. Domako says he's also co-inverter of the Gombok, the first known convex shape with the minimal number, just two, of static balance points. He says chipping by collisions gradually eliminates balance points, but shape stops short of becoming a Gombok. The latter appears as an unattainable endpoint of this natural process. The current result shows that the starting point may be a similarly iconic geometric shape, the cube with its 26 balance points. The fact that pure geometry provides these brackets for an ubiquitous natural process gives me happiness, he says. When you pick up a rock in nature, it's not a perfect cube, but each one is a kind of statistical sh shadow of a cube. It calls to mind Plato's allegory of the cave. He posited an idealized form that was essential for understanding the universe, but all we see are distorted shadows of that perfect form. This is from University of Pennsylvania, and it's a, a recent July 20th article on Science Daily. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on 
not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.